Good afternoon, fellow Singaporean. <clears throat> the last time we gathered here, I remember it, Gilbert, it was during the water hike <coughs> uh, talk, right? When the rain poured, and then we got the 30% hike. Now we are gathering here again, talking about similar issues, which is the government taking away money from us. The two previous speakers have spoken and shared some details about how this GST 2% hike is unnecessary. And I believe later on the other two speakers will further elaborate more on those things. If you have seen what Tian Lim has said in his video, it is very damning about the budget, especially about the GST. I would like us to take a step back to highlight something a lot more fundamental than, the, than just the GST. The GST essentially is a symptom of a deeper problem that we are facing, right? Which is why the government get to do what it wants all the time, introduce taxes that we sometimes wonder just like what Go Ming Sen explained, when they could have taken from somewhere else, right? But instead, they wanted to take from us, the common people. And then like how our uncle have explained, they decide to just take from everyone everything. Instead of, they could have made certain items excluded from the list, but they did not, right? And then we have the ST printing to show that how our GST is so low, which is half truth. This is what we are facing, my friend. Now the stark reality. In 2015, 2.4 million eligible voters, Singaporean like you and I, 93% of them voted and gave this government the mandate that they got. 70%, sadly, that's the truth. They gave this government the free hand because once they have the two-third majority, nobody can check them. They can do whatever they want. He asked me to carry on. <laughs> so, now we are facing the brunt of what could be a wrong decision, right? We see it in the impending GST increase that will take place as they have presented in Parliament. We already know that they're going to do the carbon tax, right? The carbon tax will increase our expenses because the energy company will dump it on us, the consumer. That's what they do. We already have the 30% water hike etc 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 the the hard truth is that 2015 we gave away our right to protest by giving them the two-third majority in parliament and they are just doing what they got in a brutal way singaporean we deserve it of course not this year right right we don't but the collective we because that's how the system works Winner takes all. That's how it works. We got easily played into their hand. We, we, we got played into their hand, right? On the, on the last day of um, election, what did they do? Common one mentioned about what happened tomorrow if PAP is out of power, right? Terrorism and so on. And we bought into it because there was something called, which they introduced called the cooling day. Cooling day, every else must shut up except their paper. Because their paper is already ready to print and propagandize whatever that they want. We gave them that abs almost absolute majority even though we know that CPF, our CPF has already been locked up. For majority of us, we can't even taste that hard-earned money that we sweat for donkey years 
because they decide, not us, they decide, they need the minimum sum. So we cannot get, we can get 5,055, and there you go, be happy. Then the, the craze of chasing the, the GDP numbers by bringing in foreign, cheap foreign labor, suppressing our salary. And then we have, just now I was talking to some of uh, my colleagues who were saying how now Uber and Grab is so expensive. Why? Because, again, they are big companies, they must say, swallow up small companies, right? They swallow up, they monopolize. In Singapore, that's how it works. Real business means there's competition. However, in our form of business, there's monopoly. And again, once, for example, all this uh, rental, Maple Tree, right, the company that, that is owned by Tomase that owns so many of these office spaces, they are so powerful, they determine the rental price. And they hold on, they have the standing power to hold. So as a result, the companies have no choice. We have to rent the, those uh, premises and it trickles down. We, the consumers, will bear the brand of high rental costs. Even the, the hawker centers and so on are the same. Then we gave them that mandate even though they screw up, right? Did, did I say, uh, did, did we say that they screwed up? No, the auditors general said they screwed up. Two years of report showed so many of the boo-boos in their own ministry, their own state board. Don't forget the MEC rubbish bin, right? Just imagine, how can that happen? But it happened, yet we gave them the 70%. However, is PAP innocent recipient of this absolute mandate? Are they innocent? Oh, people give, give us the mandate. Are they innocent? No. <clears throat> Since they got into power in 1959, they felt that they, over time, they start to feel that they are invincible, right? Because they keep getting to the majority again and again. And slowly we see every form of check and balance become disappears. Right? Their version of check and balance appears. No, they can check themselves. And then they set up rules to rule forever. That's what they do. That's what powers always do. They introduced in 1988 what we call the GRC, right? The GRC. The only place in the world where we have GRC, supposedly to help people like me, the Melayus, the Mamas, right? Supposed to help us, right? Is it true supposed to help us? No, it's not. Their own ex MP said it in court recently. Hari Kumar said in court, over the issue where there were some residents that challenged in court about having a by-election because Madam Halima de decided to have greener pastures over at the Istana. I quote, this is what Harikuma said in court. GRC scheme was designed to ensure minority representation at the point of elections. No, it's not about us. It's only good for show during election. Osman, you like that in Osman. I feel used, right? So who's using the race card? They keep using the race card, right? Don't forget, they just did that for the presidential election. <clears throat> so we are foolish to think that it was done for noble causes. Oh, they have the interest of the minority in mind. In the past, how did JBJ win election in Ensign? A huge majority of the voters in Ensign were Chinese. They voted for JBJ. Were they racist? No. 
Some people are racist, majority are not. So don't say all of us are racist. And the recent by election in Bukit Batok, what happened? Dr. Chi lost to Murali, right? Murali, China, Zaba. Huh? What is, what is so good for them, this GRC system? They manipulate the boundaries. They manipulate the boundaries, right? Every time there's election, suddenly your estate can be part of Jurong, right? Although it's in the east. Because what they do, they tarik, right? They tarik here, tarik there. Because they have the numbers. They know which block, which group of block is voting who. They know. Because I was in the last election. I saw. That's how they count. We have the figures. So now, breakthrough through GST is very difficult. It's very difficult. Why are these important to note, my friend? We get back, we get back to G, uh, GST later. There is an enormous obstacle that we face today because of the power that they have. There has not been a breakthrough at the GRC level. Only 23 years later, in 2011, when Aljunet was lost to the WP. And that was a massive blow for them. That it shook their system, right? But, like our uncle mentioned just now, parliament is still very much one-sided. Unless we break the two-third majority. It's tough, but it's not impossible. So, my friends, the only key for us to stop this 2% increase is to deny them at the next election the two-third majority. That's the only way we can do it. We start with denying the two-third majority. <laughs> if that happens, everything changes. Everything changes. The game is up for them. Cannot suka suka anymore. Because you have you will have Dr. Chi Go Meng Seng on all of us inside to squeeze them. And they cannot take us the people for granted anymore. Because they cannot pass laws so easily. No shoving down our throats, bitter pills. While they swallow the sweet ones, right? And in parliament, we can push hard for them to open up the books. That is Go Meng Seng's point. So long as we do not know what is the real state of our reserve, everything is guesswork, right? Oh, we need to jaga our reserve. I die must jaga our reserve. Eh, but how, how, how much in the reserve? Someone said that it's in the excess of one trillion. That is a bloody lot of money. <laughs> GS3 is a regressive tax regime. We know that. You, you, you just Google check. Is it regressive? Why is it regressive? Because it pinched the poor. It pinched the poor. In relative terms, the poor pay more. Although everybody pay 2%, right? But the poor pay more because they have lower income. Yet, Singapore is the most expensive city in the world. Isn't that crazy? In 2014, the new paper, now no more, reported one in 10 household is a millionaire household. How nice. One in 10. Because our flats are asset expensive, right? We are holding to asset, right? We are asset rich, cash poor. Then we are number seven in the world for high net worth people per 100,000. Reported. People with a lot of money. Every 100,000, that's one. I've mentioned just now, reserve estimated to be in the excess of $1 trillion. So why no money? Why no money? Why, one, why must increase? Oh, they say we cannot, we cannot just suka suka take. But they, they have done it before when they want to.
So the books must be open. Transparency is the key. We need to know. We are not stupid. Tell us. Don't say that, oh, we cannot tell. Which other, go other government will, other country will manipulate our currency and so on. Oh, we are not stupid. Huh? Tell us how much money is there. Right? Like in the, in the video Al Jazeera, Dr. Tan Cheng Bok mentioned, right? How, how much? We need to know. We have a right to know. Only if he was the president, right? That is a big only. <laughs> There are actually, in truth, many ways to cover the expected rising healthcare costs. Yes, it's true. There are going to be a lot more poor people, old people, sorry, and maybe also poor people. But the PAP chooses the easy way, taxing everybody. GST is a regressive tax. Because, again, because they know they can get away with it. Now they are so emboldened, they announce it in advance. So confident that they're going to be the next ruling party again, right? Because Singaporean, the seventy percent, will give them the two third majority. <clears throat> there are other ways to be done. They could have tightened the expenses, stop leakages, because the auditors generally report say, say that there are leakages, and then uh, Go Meng Seng mentioned about the hundred and sixty billion line sales over the last ten years that. For some reason, they legislate that they cannot use it. Convenient, right? They legislate that they cannot use it. But then when it comes to the president, they legislate that it cannot be a China, it must be a Melayu this time around. They, for your info, we the Melayu were never consulted. You really want to give us the president? Ask us, lah. Have the courtesy to ask us. No. Never ask us. And then there are money making machines, the Masse and GIC. What 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 is these two big gigantic companies supposed to do, right? What are they supposed to do? Make money out of a reserve for what? To be used, right? No. Which, which is sweet, you know? Has, has those companies become an end in itself or a means to something? They should be a means to, for us, the people, right? Now they become an end for himself, for themselves. And they're making tons of money every year to all those rich people. There is only one way to stop them. We have to deny them the two-third majority at the next election. You just imagine, right? You just imagine, now the minister's salary are packed to the highest bracket, right? You just imagine if it's packed to the lowest bracket, times how many times you want to times 50 times, but packed to the lowest bracket, so that they know how you feel. If they want an increased pay, they have to make sure that the lowest income get higher than the Salary will go up. Now they don't feel anything. And if they don't have two-third majority, they will start using their heart to force their brain to think. What is the big picture of our collective states? Parents, grandparents today have to slog out. You see them, right? in the hawker centers, working. I go to hawker centers, I like to talk to them. And these innocent people, they are sincere. They say they have to work. They have no choice, they have to work. But it, it hurts your heart, right? To see our grandparents, who were the pioneer generation, who have sacrificed so much for this country, having to slog out until they die. Is this the kind of society we want when we know we are the most expensive country in the world? We have the money, we have the means to help them, but we are so stingy in wanting to help them. And they and their cronies, they keep making multi-billion dollars, right? How can a multi-million dollar minister feel for the poor? Impossible! You can't feel for the poor if you are earning that kind of 
money. When when they when they introduced the multi million uh, the, the the increase in minister pay, what did they say? What did they say? Oh, because you want to attract the best, the best out there, the best. You want to attract the best so they can join. After the scheme start, how many of the best out there join them? How many? What we have is generals from the army becoming ministers, right? What business do they know? They know how to give orders, but they are not. People in the business sector, So, a taxi driver asked, Hey, ini mau, mau duit banyak ini kenapa? Ada lubang ke ada mau timbus? So, is it there are holes somewhere that we do not know of? We, we will only know if they open up the books. Why don't they want to open up the books? So that we can see. There are many ways in which we can run this country, my friends. But, the current way, alternative views are sidelined. They, they keep saying, right, we welcome alternative views. We got, you try, lah, you try to give your alternative views. You see what happened? You get sidelined, right? You don't get invited to feedback session, right? The people must have the equal share of our prosperity because we have money, we have a lot of money. Not just the top 10 to 20 percent. Can this state be changed, my friend? Can it be changed? Seems very difficult, right? Huge odds are stacked against us, the people. But it is not impossible. So what does it take? I want to touch a bit on this, yeah? although it's not directly related to GST. Unity of the opposition is crucial. We need to take a page from Malaysia. Look at where they are today. The opposition decided to unite. How can you, you ever imagine DAP and PAS together? It happened, right? The most memorable, <laughs> amazing picture that I saw in the last Malaysian election is when Chinese kids go around wearing, wearing a bandana in green with Arabic words because they are supporting PAS. Right? Because they know the people is more important. It is not me. It's not my party. It is the people. The party is but a vehicle that we use. The stakes are high. So opposition members, we have to think about it seriously. And who can imagine now Mahathir and Mahathir with the Pakatan Harapan? Who can imagine? The person that put Anwar in jail. What, what is that? That is sacrifice, right? Sacrifice for the people. You swallow your ego, but because of the cause, we come together. The stakes are high. And then the third sector, the civil society and the arts. You must come up more. You have started, but you must come up more. Because the opposition has only so much that we can do. There are so many doors that are shut to us. But as a civil, civil society, you can do something. Even those in the arts, some are coming forward. More must do their part. Be critical. In Singapore, we still do not have a whistleblowing culture. Most of the changes in Malaysia is taking place because brave whistleblowers are coming forward. Then, when we have done all this work, we can have a nationwide campaign to deny the government this PAP government, the two-third majority, so that all this can stop. All this can stop. Consult us before you do all these things. Finally, for the GST. This is what we can do. It is, it is a long shot, but we can still do it. We can start a nationwide petition campaign to say a clear no 
to this GST hike. Numbers count. We can still have our own voice out there, even though the parliament has been bought. We can gather in the thousands people to sign those petitions and give a very strong message to the government that you can do what you want to do, but the people are not happy with this. And we disagree with what you have done. So my friend, that is my message to all of you today, this afternoon. I hope we don't lose hope. Although there are similar sparse past number, but I think it will start with this. It will start with this. This will encourage more people to come forward. We need a unifying force so that the opposition can come. And we have some, someone who can do that, and we hope that person does so. Thank you very much.